in my last band, I would play it and my bass player would say, he, he would describe it as music to commit suicide to. What? Nobody knows everything. And that I wish I wouldn't, hadn't waited so long. Because I didn't start seriously writing songs till I was about 35. Don't forget to hire me as your music consultant. We'll map out the perfect plan to put your music career on the fast track. 20 minutes with me will save you 20 years worth of struggle. And remember, your first 15 minute consultation is free. Click on the link below. What's up, Intrepidators? It's me, your intrepid songwriter, chronicling my adventures as a songwriter, because seriously, who does that? And I'm here to help you get on the fast track. Today on the show, we have a man that I know you're going to enjoy talking to because he brings such great and unique perspectives on songwriting. A lot of stuff he has to say, I want you to check it out. So I'm going to introduce to you Tom Compton from The Rehydrators. The Rehydrators is sort of my umbrella name for my music. Uh Kind of like Trent Reznor has Nine Inch Nails. Uh The Rehydrators is sort of the way I approach presenting myself because music for me is is all about healing and restoration. And uh, this has been a big year for me. I've lost like 55 pounds. I've stopped drinking. And so it's all about renewal. And the Rehydrators is kind of a term that kind of captures all of that. Uh, ideally I'm not thinking that's the best place is to reach the point where I'm on stage and not thinking. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, music, my, my project before the rehydrators, I was in the driveway drinkers and I was trying to be a party band uh-huh. and I, all of those songs like drinking on the driveway, I I've retired those, those songs. Uh-huh. And so when, I, when I'm now, when I'm playing, I mean, I don't know that I'm trying to stay within, you know, healing as a motif. Mm -hmm. I I write each song from the heart of whatever I want to say, but I'm not writing about, you know, what a party I was at last night anymore, you know? Uh On Twitter, I'm at Rehydrators. Uh, That's, uh, that Twitter has evolved. That, I started out, just telling jokes. Mm -hmm. And so I still do that. Mm -hmm. So if you follow me on Twitter, you're going to get mostly jokes. But uh, if I have a show, I'll I'll throw it out there. But so it's it's sort of my joke outlet, like music is a certain outlet, selling jokes is a different outlet. Uh, I have a Facebook page with the rehydrators and Tom Compton and the rehydrators. Um, The song that comes to mind off off the bat is uh, one of my older songs is called Rest Stop. Mm-hmm. And in my last band, I would play it and my bass player would say, he, he would describe it as music to commit suicide to. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I, I took it as a compliment because that was really the emotion I, I was trying to gr- get to it of, de- of desperation. Mm-hmm. And it's a song about a guy who is a truck driver, who is became a truck driver to escape a failed relationship and the, the chorus would always come back to uh, a different city i'm 90 miles south of saint paul but i'm a lifetime away from you and uh, wow. it would be go to go to different locations but it would always come back to at the same time i'm a lifetime away from you and i'm driving a truck to to get away from that mm-hmm. uh that that whole dealing with it so i um but uh, the process with that you know, what's fun is having different things to spur music. And that was the first song I wrote on my mandolin. And I was just messing around with the mandolin mm-hmm. and I just followed it. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm not much of a mandolin player, mm-hmm. but that's the mandolin has that, that high kind of desperate sound to it to me. And that was what kind of came out of just playing around with the mandolin. Because that is a I'm primarily lyric. a That's a great lyric, I want to tell you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm primarily a guitar player, so to pick up a different instrument, mm-hmm. like a mandolin or pl- sit down at the piano, mm-hmm. it it, it kind of gets the brain thinking in different ways and can can get rid of writer's block or mm-hmm. creative obstacles. Mm-hmm. So that that was a 
Just one, one example. I am a storyteller and I am trying to become more of a performer as I go along. Okay. Um, my my so- songs are songs come to me in a very verbal way because I'm trying to say something. Mm-hmm. I almost most of the time I have it's almost like a poem that I come back and put music to. Um, but so so there's something I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. and then I love playing too. So it's like it's almost a, a a double process to be able to write the song and say something. And then to be able to get it across. And I feel like I'm further along as a storyteller and a songwriter than I am as a performer, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm uh, getting better all the time. <laughs> um, that nobody knows everything and that I wish I wouldn't, hadn't waited so long because I didn't, start seriously writing songs till I was about 35. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that I gave myself permission when I was younger Mm -hmm. to run with it. I started playing guitar in high school and I put it down for about 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I I, I remember exactly in 2006, I was at Fitzgerald's in Berwyn and I saw the Yahoo's play, which has Dan Baird from the Georgia Satellites and Eric Amble from the Dell Lords. It was like, it's like a super group and Terry Anderson from the Olympic ass kicking team. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's their super group. And I saw how much fun they were having on stage. And I was like, I should get my guitar out of my closet. Mm-hmm. So I just wish I had done that sooner, you know, because that was when I started writing songs and I started trying to get on a stage and and kind of have that fun because uh, I, I just wish that I had known that I should have done that earlier. <laughs> yes, uh, about a year ago, I was driving uh, with my 12 year old daughter in the car. Uh, she had just seen me open for another artist the night before, and which was very cool to have my, my kids see me play, it was really, really cool. And uh, her reaction was, she was impressed, but she was like, oh, I could never do that. I could never write a song. And that really struck me. And I said, I was like, oh, yeah, you can. You can. And I, because I believe everybody has music in them. Mm-hmm. And some people it comes more naturally to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think every, it, it resonates. And I think that's why we're, the people connect with music because it's there. Um, but I believe everybody can write songs. So I told her that I thought she could that it's the skill and you have to practice it. But I did not, I I don't believe that she should have told herself that she can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so that struck me and I, I, it's, it's kicked around in my head and it's never gone away that whole exchange. And so I started formulating a project and it's right now it's called let's write a song. Mm -hmm. And it's something I'm doing to encourage kids, especially Mm -hmm. to, write music to don't be intimidated don't be think it's something that's up there and you're down here it's uh that music is for everybody and it it doesn't have to be great right off the bat i I remember seeing an interview with john hyatt and he talked about the first song he ever wrote and it was just an e chord and he was writing it about a girl he liked Mm -hmm. and i was like that is that's a great place to start you know you're you're expressing something you're doing something so Even if it's only lowering the bar of what music needs to be, it doesn't have to be perfect off the bat. It's a process. I just want to encourage kids to give music a try because it's it's rewarding. I have a puppet that I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous about incorporating the puppet, but Uh uh, it's a monkey named Jacques the Monkey. uh, It's missing a nostril. So I, I see it as an opportunity to write a song about having one nostril. Okay. So I don't want to overthink it because I'd like it to kind of happen on the spot with the kids. But, you know, it, it's a starting place. Like the mandolin is a starting place for a song. Mm-hmm. Uh, puppet with one nostril is a starting place for a song. Mm-hmm. So 
and it's silly. So we, and I, to, to connect with kids, I think silly is important. You know, just get rid of the, any pretension, pretension or nervousness right. and uh, go from there. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Great, great. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Take care.